bone marrow transplant is a life-saving procedure to treat various types of blood cancer. This groundbreaking treatment has opened many doors of hope with people facing similar challenges. Hi, I'm Dr. Lakshmi, and you're watching Yashoda Hospital's Health Talk Session, where all your health-related queries are answered here. So let's discuss about blood cancer and role of bone marrow transplant in our country. Joining our discussion today is a renowned hematologist, Dr. Maman Chandi, ex-director of Tata Memorial Center from Kolkata. Welcome to the program, Doctor, and it's so good to have you. Thank you. So, Doctor, we are witnessing a massive surge in blood cancer cases, especially in a country which is posing a significant health concern. So what is the burden of blood cancer and how do you think this is affecting us, doctor? I think uh, cancer as a problem is increasing all over the world. One really doesn't know whether it's increasing or more people are being diagnosed and therefore the prevalence is increasing. It is said that out of three deaths in the UK, one will be due to cancer. Now in India, it's not as stark, but definitely the proportion of patients being diagnosed with cancer is increasing. And that is partly because our population pyramid is changing. We now have more older people and cancer is a disease related to age. Now you must remember that among all cancers, blood cancer is actually very, very small. So in women, it is breast, it is uterine cancer. In men, the main cancers are head and neck, stomach. And therefore, I would say that, that among all cancer diagnoses in India, less than 5% will be blood cancer. Now, blood cancer affects everybody. It can affect children and it can affect adults also. Now, what causes blood cancer? We really don't have any clear idea apart from the very few cancers of the blood which have a genetic basis. More than 90% of patients whom we diagnose, when the parents ask me or the patient asks me, why did I get this cancer? The answer is, I don't know. Why you got cancer? Today in our country, increasingly, facilities to diagnose and treat blood cancer are increasing exponentially and therefore their patients are coming for treatment and many of them are being cured. Now, if you look at children with acute lymphatic leukemia, the mainstay of treatment is intensive chemotherapy. And this chemotherapy can go as long as two years. And about 85% of children with acute lymphatic leukemia can be cured. So I sometimes get a phone call saying, I'm baby Anita. Who are you? says, I was your patient. When? When I was three years old. What are you doing now? I'm a computer science graduate and I'm going to join for my MTech. So that is what is happening in childhood cancer where we're able to cure a significant proportion with intensive chemo. Now when it comes to acute myeloid leukemia, unfortunately our cure rates with chemo alone, are in the 20% range. And many of these cancers, in particularly adults, require an allogeneic bone marrow transplantation in order for cure to happen. With regard to chronic myeloid leukemia, the advances in the last two decades are absolutely amazing. And today, with an oral drug called Glivec, you can live a near normal life 
and there are patients who are now 10, 15 years after diagnosis of chronic myeloid leukemia who are living normal lives. So we've converted a blood cancer into a chronic disease like diabetes where you take a tablet today and go to work. Chronic lymphatic leukemia also, we have good treatments that are available which can control if not cure the disease. However, some recent advancements in the treatment of blood cancer have been made with newer therapies. So how do you see this to be evolving, doctor? Treatment of blood cancer today has evolved where we call it personalized medicine. So today when I diagnose a patient with leukemia, I would like to know what is the genetic change that is responsible for the blood cancer. And I would like to target that particular genetic change which has actually caused the cancer. So the first thing is that we now understand more about what genetic changes have caused the cancer in the individual patient. Second, we have much better tools for diagnosis and also to estimate our response to treatment. One of the tools is what we call minimal residual disease. And we do this using immunological or molecular techniques to say, yes, this patient is clear of the disease now. Next, a lot of new drugs have been added and these drugs have been developed based upon the understanding of the genetics of the leukemia in a particular patient. And these have come into treatment after clinical trials. Next, we have bone marrow transplantation which can be curative in patients who have failed standard treatment and the success, success rates of bone marrow transplant are improving. Next, we have immune therapies where we get the patient's own immune system to destroy cancer cells in his body. And one example of that is antibodies which can go and target the cancer cell antibodies which can direct the patient's own immune T cells to go and kill the cancer cells. And today we have a form of treatment called CAR T cell therapy where we take out the patient's T cells, we engineer them and then put them back into the patient to go and kill any remaining cancer cells. And for lymphomas, for myeloma, for acute lymphatic leukemia which has failed everything, CAR T cell therapy can be curative. So discussing about recent advancements in blood cancer therapy, doctor, could you shed some light on stem cell therapy? When we talk about stem cell therapy, we are referring to the transfer of normal stem cells from a donor. Now, till now, most transplants were done only if you had a full matched sibling or related donor. And if you didn't have a donor, you couldn't have a transplant. That has changed. How has it changed? Firstly, we now have international registries. And in the world, there are more than 5 million people who have been HLA type, who are willing to donate stem cells for a patient anywhere in the world. And I can access that registry from India. India also now has a bone marrow donor registry. And I'm happy to tell you that there are 500,000 people who are now on the Indian registries who are willing to donate bone marrow. Lastly, we have developed new ways of overcoming the barrier of histocompatibility. And we do that by, and we can do transplants called haploidentical transplants, which means a parent will definitely be half matched with the patient. There's a 50% chance that a sibling will be half matched. And we now have developed a technique 
both in the US by the Johns Hopkins group and in China with various Chinese groups where we can do a half match transplants with results which are almost as good as having a full matched donor. So all these techniques have made it possible for us to do allogeneic transplants in more individuals who need a transplant as a curative therapy for leukemia. So even though there is massive surge in the number of blood cancer in our country, but awareness about this is still scant. So how do you think we can address this concern, especially in areas with low resource setting, doctor? So I believe that uh, India is changing. And I think the resources available for treatment are gradually increasing. And we have every state government now which is announcing schemes where they are willing to support treatment for a patient from 5 lakhs to 25 lakhs per patient for a particular disease. And this is amazing. Secondly, our population is upwardly mobile and our middle class now can afford to have on their own very good treatment. Thirdly, crowdfunding in India has improved and it's possible for patients to access crowdfunding for their treatment. So I would say that today a child with standard risk acute lymphatic leukemia should be able to have good treatment and be cured with his leukemia. For chronic myeloid leukemia, our pharma industry has brought the prices down so that for 2,000 rupees a month, you can have treatment for chronic myeloid leukemia. Acute myeloid leukemia remains very expensive and induction can cost as much as 25 lakhs and a transplant can cost another 25 lakhs. So you're looking at somewhere close to 50 lakhs if you have. And this is not possible for every person to afford because resources may not be available. But thankfully in our country, more centers are coming up, more facilities are being developed, and it is easier now for Indians to have life-saving treatment for blood cancer. So having decades of rich experience in cancer care, I'm sure there are many success stories in your career. So is there something that you would like to share with us, doctor? As I told you, one of the biggest success stories of blood cancer has been the treatment of acute lymphatic leukemia. And as I told you, it is so good when a patient whom you diagnosed as a child is now carrying on with normal life, becoming doctors, computer engineers, scientists, what have you. So that is really, really gratifying. I also want to tell you that our first allogeneic transplant, which was done with an unrelated donor, was done in Valor for a person with relapsed acute myeloid leukemia. His colleagues collected the money for his transplant. We found a donor from the US and that was the first matched unrelated transplant for acute myeloid leukemia done in this country. And that patient is now 10 years post-transplant leading a normal life. So it is very gratifying when you are able to provide this sort of treatment for patients in your own country. So before we wrap this episode, doctor, what message you would like to share with our audience out there as far as blood cancer in India is concerned? Uh, the message to the audience is that the symptoms of blood cancer are not easy for a lay person to understand. If you have breast cancer, it's easy. You feel the breast and you feel a mass or you have cheek cancer and you see something in the mirror which tells you there's something wrong there. But blood cancer presents in very insidious ways. Weakness, tiredness, little bleeding from the gums, fever which is not settling down. So the 
presentation or the symptoms. And that is where the doctor who's seen you for some of these very common symptoms has to think this could be blood cancer and do the appropriate tests. And a simple blood test can often help to make that diagnosis. And that needs referral to a tertiary center where the disease can be properly characterized and the treatment which is specific for that particular cancer to be given. So thank you, doctor. It was wonderful having you here on our program today. Thank you. So this brings us to the end of this episode. Remember to join us for next week as well, where all your health-related queries are answered here. Until then, take care and stay healthy. Thank you.